guys and welcome back to another Unfiltered Gamer board game review. This video is sponsored by The Game Crafter. In today's game, we're looking at Interregnum by Philip Bernowski, and it plays three to five players, takes about 20 to 30 minutes to play, and is for ages 10 and up. In the game, you're basically trying to vie for the throne of the king who has now passed. He had forgotten to choose an heir, and so you are one of the royal members of the court, and your objective is to vie for the throne by partitioning people or sponsors from the community, whether they be peasants or princes. You're going to have a hand of seven cards. You're going to play one of those cards. You're going to bid for those cards and other players will choose to cooperatively bid against you to stop you from getting that card or by themselves or choose to let it pass. If they let it pass, you'll get that card into your tableau, much like a game like Splendor, in which you'll be able to utilize that card for bidding in later and the current round. And each card is also going to have victory points, and the way you win the game is by having more victory points than your opponent. At a certain amount of victory points, if you have the most, you will win the game. After all the cards have been played for the round, you're then going to go ahead and choose to keep one or discard all of your cards and draw back up to seven, and continue playing rounds up until the point where you hit a certain point total. If you have that point total and nobody else does, you win the game of Interregnum. Let's go ahead and take a look down below. I'll show you what comes in the game, I'll show you how to play, and then we'll discuss it a little further. So here we have Interregnum and everything included in the game, and what you're going to be getting is a deck of cards, this rule book that folds out, which will also have this specific key that tells you what all the abilities of certain cards do, and this box here that holds all the components. To begin the game, it plays three to five players, and I've set it up for four here. You're going to shuffle all the cards and then deal out seven cards for each player. Each player's hand is hidden from any other player, so when you have your seven cards, don't show them. But for example, this will be a, the cards that you can see, and these will be your three opponents. After all the cards have been dealt out and the deck shuffled, go ahead and set the deck aside for later rounds, and begin playing by choosing a player, maybe the person who looks most kingly. For instance, though, we'll just go ahead and start and choose this guy here. When you want to, on your turn, what you're going to do is you're going to choose one card from your hand and play it to attempt to get it into your tableau. And the way you do that is you're going to place it out in front of you, and then you're going to spend any number of cards of the same color right next to it. These will count as the bid for the card that you want out. Now, what do you want out? Well, basically, each card is going to have a color, and it's going to be based on this little... Uh, this little uh, curtain here. Each card will have a certain amount of victory points, and your objective is to hit 12 points at the beginning of your turn. So this one here is worth four. And then also, it will give you a certain amount of bonus uh, icons that you can use for bidding in later rounds or later turns, as well as the ability to counter other people's bids. So this guy here is rather good, comparatively to this guy. This one will have three to one, and this will be four to one. So we're gonna bring this guy out. Now, if everyone passes, this guy's going to stay in play. But what can happen is you can cooperatively start placing cards out in order to counter the cards. So this player, in turn order, going clockwise, is going to decide if they can counter it. And they can only counter with the same color card as well. And in this guy's hand, he's got blue and he's got green. So he unfortunately says, oh, I don't have any yellow to counter the card. He may or may not be lying, however. The next player can then look at his hand, and he's got a, a lot of yellow, and he can say, oh... I don't mind spending one card to counter it. So now that one card has been played by this player and only one card has been used to bid for this player, he will lose his bid and lose the card he was trying to get out to the field, which basically is going to counter him, and that will end his turn. The next player is then going to go ahead and take their turn. They're going to go ahead and look at their hand and play a card out, maybe this one here. And then they're going to go ahead and spend cards as a bid. That's three for a bid. This guy here is worth three points. He's an ambassador. He's blue. And he's able to use this specific ability after he gets it out at the beginning of any of his turns. You can use them only once per round, though. And all of them tell you what they do. In this case here, this says you can pick two random cards uh, from two different people, put one of them in, put, pick a card from two random people, put one in their hand, and put one into the discard pile. So he's got three blue he's bidding. So everybody else can choose to try and counter him. He only has one blue. So maybe he'll say, oh, okay, I've got one blue I can use to stop him. And then this guy will look at his hand and go, oh, I have one blue, so I'll use that to try and stop him. And then this player here, he does have a blue, but he can choose to not play it. He can go, oh, I don't want to play that, because maybe he wants to play a card later in the round. So what will happen is these two will go, and these three will go, 
And because he had more than the cooperative amount of cards dealt up by the other players, he gets to keep the ambassador, which he'll then be able to use this ambassador's ability by turning it to the side in the round. You can't use it on the turn that it comes into play, however, but otherwise you will be able to use it once per round. Uh, so the next player is going to get a chance to go look at their hand. He's going to play a blacksmith. He's going to bid two yellow. And then everybody else is going to look at their hands and determine if they want to try and counter him. He's not because he wants to play this guy and use these two as bids. So he'll say, oh, I don't have any yellow. This guy doesn't have any yellow. And this guy doesn't have any yellow. So he's also going to get this into play. This is going to count as two red cards whenever he wants to bid or counter somebody else's. Then it goes to this next player's turn here. And he's going to play this, this yellow card here. And he's going to spend two. Now, interestingly enough, people know that this player uh, has this guy out, but it's red, so it's not going to be able to counter a yellow guy, and neither will this one because this is an ability. So once again, looking through yellow, no yellow, obviously no yellow, and this guy definitely has no yellow. So he gets this guy into play, so now this guy has this one in play. So each, character, each player so far has this one, except for us. We don't have one yet. Let's see if we can get one into play, though. We'll take, uh, oh, we'll try and get this guy into play, this Huntsman. We'll spend one. And then people are going to look to see if they have red cards. He doesn't. This player will go, oh, I don't have any red cards, but I can use my ability. But maybe I won't. Okay, okay. So he could turn this over, counting for two against his one, and remove this guy, but he's not going to do that. This guy has three red cards, but he's also going to pass as well, because he wants to get this guy into play. So this is going to be removed, and it's just going to keep going like that. We'll put this green guy into play for two. I don't think anybody can counter him. This is one green. Oh, he does have two green. Eh, he'll say, I play one green. I play one. Oh, no, whoops. I'll play one green to counter this guy. He still has two, though. He's going to pass, and maybe he might pass two because he can try and get these guys into play. So what's going to happen is these will go, and he will get this character over there. And now this guy over here is at five victory points total of his 12 that he needs. He's at two, he's at two, and we are at three. He only has one card in hand, so he's going to have to pass. This player over here is going to try and play a red card, so he'll play this one and, and, and or he'll play this one and bid two for it. To which case, he's going to pass, he will pass, but this guy will spend his blacksmith as two to counter these two, thusly removing them from the game along with this character here. And that is how you use these guys, very powerful. He will now be done because he's got no more cards left. It's this guy's turn next. And he will go ahead and play this one for uh, one green, no cards. Uh, no cards here, nobody can counter it, so this is simply going to be discarded. And uh, when you have no cards or one card or less, you have to pass. So he's going to pass, 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 and pass. That will end the round. And then each player can choose to keep the card they have remaining in their hand. These two will. And then you're going to deal out every player seven cards once again, unturn any cards that have been turned, and progress to the next round and keep playing. At any point, if somebody hits 12 points in front of them at the beginning of their turn, they win the game. However... If he had 12 and he had 12 and it was his turn, he doesn't win. He has to have more than any, po any, uh, more than any player as well as have 12 points. So if he had 13 and he had 12, he would not win. But on his turn, he would, provided this player didn't get over 13. And that's the basic idea for Interregnum. That's how you play the game. A lot of special abilities that we'll talk about when we come up, as well as what I think about this social game of bidding and counterbidding. Okay, so a short caveat for the game. If you pass because you either can't play any more cards or choose to, you're not out of the round necessarily. You just can no longer put any cards out into play. So you can still turn your cards over to use abilities, as well as the fact that you can turn cards to stop other players from being able to place certain cards onto the field. Basically, if somebody bids two red and has a character out that they want to put out, like this general here, and you have a character that has two red on it, you can turn that character, as well as spend that one card in your hand to stop that card from getting into play play. The game has a set of cards that is going to be equivalent for most of the colors as far as different types, but not all cards are created equal. So in this case, we got the three different colors and they are all equal in power and type as well as points. But there are also cards like these ones here, the alchemist, the astronomer, the jester, the court and courtesan, and the ambassador. These all present interesting powers. And if I look at this little thing here, it tells you all the different powers these guys provide. We talked about one of them where you can turn it, take a card from one player, take a card from another player, keep one of them and discard the other. There's other things like looking at a player's hand, draw three cards from the deck and then discard any three cards from your hand. Your turn ends instantly, but you don't have to, uh, you don't have to recruit a supporter at this turn. So basically you're passing without actually passing passing and then something like you can uh, rotate one of your cards uh, up so you can use it again so those are the different abilities in the cards these also have a strong point value on them so they're very useful to get out into play 
overall, Interregnum is a really fun game. And just by my play, or my round of play explaining how it works to you, you don't really get to see the social aspect in the game, but there's quite a lot of it. Because when you play a card and you want to get into play, everybody else doesn't want that card in play either. However, spending cards from your hand is detrimental to your ability to succeed in the game, so you want everyone else to spend cards from their hand, or to turn their characters sideways to remove those cards from play, thusly giving you the most likelihood of putting out more cards. So that's where the cutthroat and uh, shenanigans comes into play. You're going to be like, oh, I don't want this card in play, but unfortunately I don't have any blue cards in my hand to stop the queen getting into play on her turn. So hopefully you guys will have enough cards yourselves to bid in order to get rid of that. Or, oh, I got one card when you actually have four. I only got one card. Can you guys fulfill the rest of it? And that way on your next turn, because everybody's dumped blue, you can make me, bam, baby, now I got this guy and I'm spending three additional bids on it. It has that interesting, like, switch out or fake out when you're not realizing it, bam, somebody's got something else in play. And if you're smart and cunning, you'll notice when that happens. Also, what's interesting too is, in general, the game will end when somebody gets 12 points at the end of their turn, but there are certain cases in which you can tie your opponents, and players will let you tie even if they're losing, because that means they've got more likelihood of winning on the next turn. So you're kind of playing a political game of who do you want to tie with who, as opposed to who do you actually want to win the game, and there has that interesting aspect to the game. This game is a lot of fun, it's really quick and really easy to play, and I really like this game a lot, in fact, because after we played it, we wanted to play it again. The only downfall to the game is it needs three players to be played, so it's not a single or a uh, duo player game, but that also includes the fact that it is a social game, and without that third player, there's not a lot of bidding, like, you, there's not a lot of options in bidding, so it wouldn't make sense to play this game two players anyway. Obviously, the more players in the game, the more cutthroat it gets, and the more you can try and bamboozle players, allow certain things to hit play and other things to not hit play. The only amount of luck is based on the cards that you get in your hand, but how your social game is will determine how well things work out for you. Obviously, if somebody gets a better hand than you in general, they're probably going to do better in the round, but there are exceptions to that rule based on how you play and how tricky and sneaky you are at getting additional cards out there. Overall, an exciting, solid little game. I really enjoyed this one. This is probably my favorite mini game or small game that I've played from the Game Crafter thus far. Uh, I highly recommend this one, and if you have any interest in taking a look at it, you should definitely take a look down below in the description. It's on the Game Crafter. You can go ahead and pick it up. I really, really enjoyed this one, even if I probably didn't pronounce the name of the game right, Interregnum. Maybe I didn't. I don't know if I did that or not correctly, but overall, an exciting, fun little game that has a quite a few little features to it, but it's very simple, yet extremely strategic.